Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how properties are evolving again in C Sharp 11 and how they're kind of introducing a new keyword which kinda existed but now it's gonna be used alongside properties I think for the better. This feature alongside the required keyword was supposed to be in C Sharp 10 however they were pushed to C Sharp 11 but they are coming for sure in this version because Matt Stogensen, the lead designer for C Sharp has confirmed it at MS Build and NDC Copenhagen and I asked him in person and he said yes they are both coming for sure. So don't worry if they're not documented properly yet, they are coming. If you like the above content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. All right, so this feature is called Semi-Auto Properties, and I'm going to be showcasing it in sharplab.io, which allows me to show you the high-level C-sharp being translated to low-level C-sharp and actually try out the preview features as well. Now, back in the day, and if you're interested in more of a history of properties in C-sharp, I'm going to put a video in the description down below. You can check it later, not now. Uh, but... Back in the day, properties looked something like this. If you want to have a property, you would have a private um, field of the type you want. So in this case, let's say it's the full name of a person. And then you would have the actual property. And the property would look something like this. Public string, full name, and then you would have a getter and a setter. And let's just expand it over here so we can see what's going on. So you'd have the getter method and then the setter and the getter would return the field for that property and then the setter would allow you to set the value so you would have something like this um, full name equals and using the value keyword you'd be able to get the value that the set method is being invoked with and as you can see in the lowered code over here nothing is really changing the same code in puts the same code out however because most of the scenarios where you wanted a property look like this the c sharp team said do you know what let's just simplify this you no longer need all that fluff all you need is to specify get and set like this and then we're gonna go ahead and have the compiler generate everything for you so the backing field is generated for you the compiler generated getter and setter are also implemented for you and that's that everyone is happy we have the properties and we have just one line of code instead of five six that we had before now if this was an init only property not much is changing here the only thing that's changing is that this is now a read only field behind the scenes because it is immutable and init is an instruction for the compiler to only allow you to set the value upon initialization now with all that said if you wanted to have any sort of custom logic in your getter or your setter let's say that the full name is actually uh, computed by the first name and the last name or let's say that when someone is setting the full name what you want to do is you want to set the value but also trim any white spaces so let's go ahead and implement that you would need to go back to having a field so private string full name and then you'd have to implement the getter even if you don't do anything with it and you have to say for example that full name equals value dot trim and now, as you can see, I generate the same code as in the beginning, and I need to have that field here specified. And also, even though I'm not doing anything with a getter, I have to implement it. I can't simply do this and call it a day, which is very, very annoying. So what C Sharp 11 allows you to do in semi-auto properties is first, this will be valid code. You'll be able to only implement the getter or the setter if you want to, and the default implementation will be assumed. So this would be valid C Sharp 10 code, but also you no longer need to use that field all you need to say is field equals the value and you can do the same for the getter as well so you can say um, that this returns field don't auto complete it here we go and as you can see this generates the exact same code as before but we no longer need to have that backing field explicitly specified which also allows you to do other custom stuff for example if you want to have an on property change method over here you can simply pass the field down and do stuff with it or you can have it on property changing so before it is actually passed down you can specify the field for the old value but also the incoming um, value for the new value so this is becoming very very easy without having to deal with backing fields explicitly specified but it doesn't actually stop there because now we can do the following which i find awesome so first and foremost if i do this 
um, this is valid C sharp code. Not that it really matters, but you can write it and it returns the backing field value as you'd expect. However, when you go with properties with this syntax, whatever you do here will happen every single time. So if, for example, you wanted to have like a trim or whatever, right, which will allocate the new trim string as well, this will be computed every single time. And in some cases, people have things that take one or two seconds to calculate here, which isn't great. So how do you make a lazy version of that property, which is also cached behind the scenes? Well, now you can in C Sharp 11 because you'll be able to do the following. Let's say that we have some public string method that does something, I don't know, let's say inefficient um, stuff. I don't know. That, that thing takes a string and does something with it. And maybe that takes a while. Well, in this case, this is just going to, I don't know, return my name. But in your case, it might do some actual work. So what I'm going to be able to do now in C Sharp 11 is I'll be able to say question mark, question mark equals inefficient stuff. And this will be valid C Sharp. And what this means is that now I'm going to have this call only be invoked once the value will be set to the field, assuming initially it was null, then have the value be assigned to the field itself. And then every other time I'm getting this value, I'm going to get it from the field because it no longer is null. Meaning that now I have a very easy way to do a lazy property implementation that might be doing some work, but not having to worry about this having to be calculated every single time in a very nice one-liner. Now you might be seeing this field keyword and you might be thinking, oh my God, another new keyword in C Sharp. I can't stand it. Well, actually you could technically still do something like this. Let me just copy that actually and say public get and set. Uh, you could actually in previous versions as well, go ahead and specify that you want an attribute. So I'm actually going to use the non-serializable uh, field keyword. And now, as you can see, the attribute is assigned on the field itself, not on the property. If I remove the field thing, then this doesn't compile because this is not an attribute for a property. However, if I use something like obsolete, for example, which is, then you can see that this goes here. However, when I assign the field thing, it goes on the field itself. So the keyword existed, but it wasn't really usable in that scope as it is now with semi-auto properties. Now, I would like to know what you think in the comments, because the more features that are getting in C Sharp, the more people are worried that you have to keep in mind all these new ways to do things. So please let me know in the comments down below what you think about this feature. I'm also going to leave in the description a link to the issue tracking this feature in case you want to provide feedback or try it out. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.